Hello everybody and welcome to Unreal Engine 4 Basics Tutorial. In this tutorial series I'm going to be showing you how to make basic game design with uh, with Unreal Engine 4. Now Unreal Engine 4 is free and you can download it from the Epic Games uh, website. Now we are going to be looking at very basic uh, stuff like making walls, uh, programming with uh, blueprints, making cinematics, making start menus, and stuff like that are pretty simple. Um, so let's begin by an overview. So we got this map. This is uh, already made. This took me about three months. It's, uh, it's a finished game I could call for now. You, got, you can see a Sunderman Easter egg here. So basically this is what the map looks like. Now to go over the basics of Unreal Engine 4 Let's go ahead and try and look at every section here and understand what it does. So in this section, you can apply geometry, uh, light, triggers, and stuff like that. So you got the basic, you got the BBS, which we're going to use a lot, boxes, and we're going to go to volumes. There's blocking volume, there's camera blocking, uh, there's light mass, and there's finally, the most important one is the trigger volume, which we can use in somewhere. Um, there are other uh, triggers we can use, such as a box trigger or a sphere trigger. Now, let's take a look at the top side. Oh, by the way, I don't want to for, uh, forget to mention this. This is a terrain editor here. Uh, the paint, you can add uh, objects here, like multiple objects with one drop as a paintbrush. And finally, the geometry. You can edit the um, boxes we looked at here. The PPS can be edited right here in this section. Now, let's take a look at the top side. Now, we got the save that's pretty basic we're not gonna use this often at all actually we're gonna use the save button that's here save all this is the most important one you're gonna use uh, sources we don't look at these marketplace yeah, you could look at marketplace you can download there's some free stuff but um, it's, it's usually it costs money uh, settings we're gonna take a look at this It's pretty important so that you gotta make uh, the project settings and the world settings are pretty important right here we'll take a look at them uh, later uh, we got the blueprints, which is pretty crazy. This is actually the blueprints. We're going to go into it in a little bit. Cinematics, you're going to make all the things that move in the game. Uh, you can combine them into one section or make multiple ones. I made multiples, but in each one, there's like 20 objects in each one of them. So, build is very important. What build does is it builds geometry and light. And this makes your game go smoother. If it hasn't been tested, it's going to show like... If you if you place a light right here and you haven't built it, it's gonna be showing like in a glitchy way, and it's gonna show like every place that the the light is uh it's it's uh, like casting on, it's gonna show previews. Like it's gonna say previews because it's not built. And built like it could take a while to build actually because it depends on what graphics card and CPU you have. Okay, so next we have play. Uh, I usually set it as um new editor window because it's a separate window if you just select it from here it's going to show in the uh, unreal engine 4 itself uh you can start from the default or the current camera location wherever you're looking right now um i should have set it right here okay and launch same thing as play basically it's nothing special so these are the top ones now let's take a look at um let's see all right let's make it a little bit bigger at the content browser so here you got it's basic, very basic. If you've if you ever uh, been in UDK uh, or Unreal Engine 3, it's very, very similar. It's actually like almost the same. It's just more features and uh, better organized. So you got a lot of stuff here. So we got, I made a lot of folders to stay, um, uh, stay organized. Like for example, book has book. Uh, first person has, you know, a lot of uh, blueprints, audio, character, and stuff like that. Uh, you got audio, audio cues, uh, the level itself. Very important, I'm going to talk about that. And uh, finally, we got animations. Animations, pretty, pretty good stuff. So, that's pretty basic. You just browse, basically. Uh, you can import, and most importantly, save all. And uh, add new. You can add uh, widgets, particle system, material, uh, blueprint class, even C++. If you're a programmer, and you know how to program uh, game objects to move, or do anything, basically, you can add uh, C++ uh, classes. So, or scripts. Next, uh, we're going to take a look at the uh, inspector here, or world outliner. I'm used to Unity a little bit, but... So here, it's basically the same. Everything in this scene is going to be uh, right here. You're going to find it right here. Uh, fire. There's going to be a lot of stuff. As you can see, there's a lot of stuff right here. So you got to be good with gaming. If you're a professional game maker, you got to know how to name everything. 
like SM Pot 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, be very organized. Be very organized. Because it, it takes, it tends to get really, really messy. And I hate that, but I use the search button for everything. So that's fine. I can survive with it. Um, so let's say I want to find, like, change the lighting of this map. So uh, I'm not going to go around and find the light for everything. So I'm just going to type skylight. And that controls the whole thing. So it doesn't control all the light, but it controls the environment light. So I can just select it. And in here is what uh, the details are for every object. So everything you see, like rotation, uh, location, a scale, mobility, the lighting itself for this light is right here. Like you can change it to be really dark or really light. It's pretty simple. Now you can make it also uh, a lot of stuff, a lot, lot of uh, options that you're not going to usually use, but it's there. It's there if you want it. Um, for example, let's take a look at some sort of object like this. This is, I don't know what this is, but it's somewhere hidden in the map. You can actually take any object and basically you can just simply click on visible or actor hidden game. This, what it does is just set it visible or, and hidden. Now there's a difference between visible and hidden. Visible actually gets rid of the polygon, so it saves you the, the it, it, it completely goes out of the, of the frame. Uh, set hidden and actor, it's still there, the collision is still there, but you still can't, uh, you, you, the, the engine counts it in the map. So if you want to save polygons, go for visible. But I don't always go in it. But I, I use uh, the, the head in the game. Um, now next, we are going to start, let's see, got everything set here. World settings, I don't really care. The, there's a kill Z plane. Uh, you don't usually look at that unless you really want it put in the game. But I'm not going to do it for here. Because my game basically is a horror game. You're not supposed to be uh, um, dying in it. Well, at least in my rules, I don't want it, anybody dying. So let's go ahead and take a look at the game. And then we'll, we'll head back and uh, talk more. F11 to make full screen. And as you can see, I can go around. It's supposed to be darker than this. But just for you to see, this is the whole design. Thou, child, praise be for receding the request. Thou hast proven thy everlasting consummation to the Lord. Come, child, and extend thy thoughts. Okay, so what you see here is an example of an audio play on trigger. It's pretty simple to make. We also noticed that the door is closed once we got in. So that's magical. Now, there's a lot of particles you can remove collisions from, so you can pass through. Also, we're going to take a look at how the text appears when you get close to it. So, press F to pick up. You click F, and it's taken. Also, we're going to take a look at how to make... Oh, well, we can make Easter eggs, such as this one. So, it doesn't say click F, but if you do, it's going to play a sound. Next, we take a look at more triggers and how to... Feel. Okay, so I had to cut the video because the, there was an audio playing, which is pretty long. Uh, so we're going to take a look at how to do matinees. Matinees is basically making an object move. So if you click F, it's on trigger. It just moves and opens and lets you go in. Um, and yeah, that's about it for now. So let's take a look at how we start with all this. Okay. So. Go back. Oh yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on right here. As you can see, there were... Uh, visible, uh, invisible actually, when you got in and nobody we didn't see anything. So, let us start by talking about the blueprints. So, blueprints, they're, they're the, the essential things to, to, they're like coding, but it's simple coding. I would call it simple, but sometimes it gets really, really messy and tricky. So, let's take a look at the open level blueprints. As you can see, it's going to be a lot of stuff here, so... Don't be surprised. It's a pretty massive uh, chunk of stuff, but in here, every trigger, every text that needs to be activated, or anything you you call command to do, uh, will be in here. Anything that's not state, like you know, it's it's pretty self-explanatory to, to if you think about it. Uh, let's take a look at this. So, on actor begin overlap with a trigger volume. So when the collision of an actor collides with a uh, a trigger volume. The actor will be sitting hidden in game, unhidden because it's not checked. So there's a boolean right here. It's pretty simple. 
So that opens a gate. It's, it's here it gets tricky a little bit. So this gate has an enter, and the enter to enter it, you have to click on the input. So we have to make create an input on F. When you press F, press is released, therefore giving us enter access. So if the if if you're on the actor uh, colliding with the trigger, this is gonna open the gate. It closes if it ends on overlap. So if you're not in the trigger, it closes. All right, I'm not going to explain as much because you should just get it by now. Uh, I'll explain more when we get into detailed stuff. As you can see, all these right here are just booleans. True, false. One ladder. I, I uh, named it according to what the game is. Uh, just so that I don't get confused, basically. So, okay. Now, one thing I got from... Um, from other uh, sources is Infinity Blade. Infinity Blade uh, has a lot, a lot, a lot of uh, props that you can use, like walls, everything basically in here is from Infinity Blade. Well, almost everything. So these, uh, this, like every, either, everything, everything. This, yeah, I'd call everything except the buildings. Yeah, Nazi Germany, set in Nazi Germany, yeah. All right, so let's begin. So let's go ahead and make a, uh, hmm. You know what? I'm gonna go ahead use this one over here because this gives you the option to make a default player starting with sky. If you go from here and make a new layer, I don't think it's gonna give you a sky. It's just gonna give you a blank, uh, you know, uh, black basically level. It's nothing there. So if we go ahead and go into new level, see you can see empty level and default level. Just gotta click on that. I'm not gonna save because this is my final. Um, Okay, so we end up with a tiny terrain. It's just a box. It's not even a terrain. Um, uh, so what we got here is pretty simple. We got the default spawn, the uh, wind basically, some sort of wind, and the directional light, which is which affects everything basically in the in the map. If I move this, like the light just changes, rotates. You'll see why in in, in a little bit. Um, so let's go ahead and start with some basic. Uh, basic uh, you know uh, design so if I hold alt and move these are the X Y and Z axis this is pretty self-explanatory I'm not gonna go into detail about this so if we just move it there you go you made your first step it's 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 very simple so and then I can just select both by hold control alt and move now I did disable okay what you got here is um, uh, the rotate the scale and the move, which are W, E, and R. So these are pretty, like, you should learn, like, it's just pretty simple. W, E, R is E for rotate, R for scale, and W to move. I know they're not the same letters, but uh, learn them. Pretty handy. Um, next, take a look. This is the grid. It's it's pretty useful sometimes. I don't like it as much, but for some people, they, they prefer it. Uh, so it snaps. Uh, you got a grid for uh, scale and for uh, angle. So, let's go ahead and make some more chunks. So like this. And if you start now, you will be just moving around. It's pretty cool. Pretty easy for now. So, now we did this. If you imported um, Infinity Blade from the marketplace, you can actually go into environments, planes, static meshes, and you can find a lot of stuff here. Okay, I was the last one. It always tricks me. Okay, so if we place a wall, I don't know what I did too. Okay, if we click on E to rotate, we can rotate this pretty easy. Make sure the snap is on. And you can like go into 10, so 10, 20, 30. So when we place one here, place second, place third. Now you gotta make sure there's no actual spaces between them. Now in professional game design, you would have the whole object as a building set. Because this right here, in between where you don't you don't see this. So it's just a waste of polygons in the game engine. Like this is a lot of wasted polygons. You see how many polygons there? It's probably like there's one, there's two, there's three, there's four, there's five, there's six over there, maybe more. There's a lot of polygons just wasted 
you can't even see them because they are basically attached to each other. So that's why you need to be efficient when you're actually making games. But for now, it's pretty basic. So, I mean, who cares about it? Um, so, let's go ahead make just a wall. And you know what? Let's go ahead and make a door. Some sort of door. It it's, it's, doesn't have to be perfect, but there you go. I mean, pretty basic. Uh, let's go ahead and add a door. Uh, go to misc. Static mesh. And there we got some doors. Now here is where we use the scale. So go ahead and click R. And you can make this fit. Oh, oh, to move also, I need to tell you this. Uh, right click and click the WASD and you can move around. So, if you scale it just perfectly. Uh, just this. Now you can see why the grid annoys me sometimes because it's not perfect. Well, in this case, it is pretty perfect as you can tell, but uh, sometimes it's going to be like like this much space left and it, it just it just bothers me uh, so that's why you you would then you have to use turn off the snap for the for the scaling and adjust it like that so we got that done uh, let's go ahead and add some props to add props it's pretty basic you just drop drag and drop so so just like that you made yourself some barrels here so we can make them one bigger than the other and yeah well, there you go now to add material uh, some materials would come with the infinite blade like if you go materials here you can there are the materials like it's it's pretty self-explanatory I mean let's see uh, if we go to planes or actually yeah you, we could go to started uh, where is it started content uh, material should be anywhere here and you got all these materials that you can use uh, let's take a look at grass so we can add grass for each one of these now I mean it looks horrible usually what I do is this so I take all these delete them and just simply scale this on here Make sure it's the bottom two, not the z-axis, just an x and y. And there you go, you got grass. Now we could add mountains in the background. For example, if we go to the infinity blade, again, environments, uh, planes, organic, static meshes. So you could add like, not mountains, but like at least rocks or anywhere, something big in the background. Just like that, you can make simple mountains or any environment in the background. So there you go. Um, next, let's take a look at making text appear anywhere. So this video basically is going to show you like just simple tricks and that uh, would help you. Not tricks, but like just tips on how to make like uh, text appear, stuff like that. So let's take a look at how to make that. Oh, by the way, let's take a look at the directional light before we go ahead and do that. Um, so if you rotate this, it rotates, you can see right here, is that it rotates with you. So wherever you're aiming, look at the arrow right here and it shows you where it is. It doesn't matter for now, we're not using it. So let's go ahead and make a text appear when you get close to the door. Um, so, go to volumes, trigger volume, and let's make a trigger right here, a little bit bigger using the scale tool, and wider, and then we got this. So, in order to make it work, we're gonna have to make, bring some text. So just search for text render, bring it up, uh, rotate it because it doesn't face us. Make sure it's 90 degrees so it, it's perpendicular to the door. Uh, and then go ahead and type what you want to type. So uh, press F to open. And there you go. Now it's applied. 
I can make it a little bit bigger, it's pretty small. And there you go. So, now if you play the game right now, it's not obviously going to do nothing. So, it just it's just there. It's not hidden, it doesn't appear when we get closer to it. It's just there. So, you can look around for it. So, to make it uh, appear and disappear, let's go ahead and set it to hidden. So if you sit hidden in game, when you play right now, it's going to be hidden. So now let's go ahead and go into blueprints so we can start programming it to appear and uh, not appear. Okay. So select this trigger, right click on it, click add event, and begin actor overlap. What this does is sets the initial state. When the actor comes to the overlap with the trigger volume, we're going to go ahead and set the text to be invisible. So, search for hidden, set actor hidden in game, and go and select the text. Go back to the blueprint, right click, click add, create reference to text actor. Because we selected it, it's right here. It's, it's the first, always above this line is going to be the reference to whatever you selected. So click this, connect them up to the target, and don't check this because we want it to be unhidden. So, and let's go ahead and do another function. Select the trigger again, right click, add event, and go ahead and click on actor end overlap. And we're going to do the same thing. So just copy paste this, connect them to the trigger overlap. And when it ends, we want it to be hidden. So once you go uh, outside of the trigger volume, it should be hidden. So if we compile this, make sure you hit compile. Now in this case, you might want to save because it's a lot of progress. Not really, but it's it's there. So save, save all, and click OK. I'm not gonna do it for me, but and if we click play, it should show up when we go into the trigger box. So. There you go. And if we leave, it disappears. Pretty simple. Now, let me do something real quick. So let's see. Let's say that we want this door to open and close. Uh, or actually, you know what? For the sake of time, for this for this tutorial, let's make it just disappear. Okay. So um, let's go ahead and make. Go to settings, project settings, and go to input. This is where you uh, add all the keyboard inputs. So let's say go action mapping. There's all the jump, fire, flashlight, interact, sprint. Um, so let's go ahead and click on uh, click on add. And it's already set for me. So I'm going to delete this one. So what it is is you select F here. Go to keyboard and F. You can't search. If you search F you're not going to find it. It's going to give you all the F's. Um, so go ahead and go to keyboard F and you can name it interact. So once you name it interact, it's all set. You don't need to save anything. It's saved already. Uh, so close this. So once this is set, you can go to blueprints now and open level blueprint. Okay. So we got this done. Uh, now let's make a gate. A gate is going to serve as a open, close, and enter uh, uh, function in order to destroy or set the door to be open or not. So let's go ahead and drag this anywhere, either this or this, and just click gate. So we got gate, uh, hold alt and click on this. It just uh, breaks it apart. And we're going to connect this to open and this to close. So when you're on, it's open. When it's, we're not on the trigger, it's closed. And to enter, we're going to drag this and click interact. Whatever you name that F uh, button, it's going to be in here. So as you can see, action events in the input section is interact. So when it's pressed, not released, make sure it's pressed. Um, and yeah, this is all set for here. Next. Well, we need one thing to be uh, to make sure this is uh, working, but we're gonna do this later. Um, so the exit of that is gonna be uh, well. For now, let's make it 
set hidden. Uh, so yeah, let's just make it hidden. Uh, so now sometimes you might search for something and it's not there. Like you're like, where did it go? How could it possibly be gone? It's just you you selected context uh, context sensitive. So uncheck that and it's gets back. It's it just means that um it's it's this is uh, context sensitive is like what works with this. Uh, now it's not accurate all the time, but it works usually. So. Set actor, and guess what we're gonna disattach to is the door. So, select the door. Now make sure context sensitive again, and create. Attach it to here, and now set hidden, and this should work. Yeah, compile it. Now when we get close to it, text is gonna appear, and boom, there it's open. It doesn't come back because we didn't set it to come back. And the preview I was talking about, if you haven't built your light before, is right here. This is the preview. I did attach a flashlight on my character, so let's go ahead and show you how to do that in case you want to do a, a horror game. Um, okay. So to do that, go to first person uh, or third person. If you're a third person, you use a third person blueprint but for here I'm gonna use uh, the first person it's much easier uh, okay so gonna go to blueprints and character yeah first person character so right here go to viewport and basically what you need to do is you got this basically without anything at the beginning like this is not attached it's you got everything else so what you need to do is uh, add component and add uh, spotlight. Once you do that, it's going to be somewhere in this layer. So what you need to do is drag it to the camera so that it, it's attached to the camera. So just drag it and drop it on the camera, and it's attached. So wherever the camera is looking, uh, it's going to be set. So what when you did that, when you do that, select the flashlight, and you can set how much light does it emit, uh, how far it goes. There's two cones. The 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 uh, the inner one is the actual light. The this is the transition from light to dark. So, I made it look realistic. So I'm gonna I made the the, the bigger cone uh, basically more transition because if you don't do it, it looks really sharp as like a, an actual helicopter aiming at that criminal in the street. You know how these look like they're really sharp. There's no transition like a f uh, flashlight at the edges. So, you got that. You can actually sit also the intensity don't make it too much unless you want that um, and make sure you compile at the end so once that's done uh, you're gonna go ahead and get the effect of a flashlight okay so we did this now let's take a look at how to make um, booleans because we want booleans uh, for example you want to set a boolean to once this is uh, this is disappeared this doesn't show up again so to do that go back to level blueprints uh, and let's go ahead and make a variable uh, it's set to boolean by by uh, by default so don't worry about that and let's call it um, show text and we are going to now by default it's um, it's false so we're gonna go ahead and drag it click get actually oh my bad uh, click set and after that we're gonna check it as true so once you make it true um, it's gonna go ahead and, uh, and and work but we're not done yet so we set it to true but now we need to check if it's true or false in order to uh, make this work so let's go ahead and click drag from here branch and for here we're gonna go ahead and get get Click on get, attach these. Now, if it's false, it's gonna set hidden actor in game. And if it's true, it's not gonna um, it's not gonna work. It's just gonna do nothing basically. So let's test it out. That should be working. Okay. Compile and go here. Text still appears, that's good. Once we click, if we go back, it doesn't appear. 
so there's no way it can come back. Now you could technically destroy the text, but that would result in an error because it's trying to. If you just hit destroy actor and text after this, it's going to go ahead and tell you an error. It's not going to give you an error like in game, but it's going to be in, um, inconvenient for the program because it's going to be searching for something to sit hidden in game, unhidden in this case, and it's not going to find text there because it's destroyed, so it's not there. Um, so we got this done. Let's go ahead and move into matinees and we're gonna go ahead and do that in the next tutorial so thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed the basics you understood a little bit about um, unreal engine i know it's a lot to take in the first tutorial but uh depends actually on you if, if if you have experience with other game engines you would have no problem with this but if you don't then uh yeah this is the first time it's a lot of stuff to take it's a lot of stuff to cover. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, subscribe for more. And uh, I'll make the tutorial by sometime uh, in the future for part two. And we'll see you then. Peace.